and welcome back to Old School. Today we're in Worldview 480, the spiritual quadrant. And this past week I've, I've gotten some news that has really kind of brought me back to the foundations of how I maintain my spiritual health. It's not good news in regard to my physical health, although I'm, I, I stay on top of everything. Um, it's just another example of how we do need to listen to our bodies, listen to everything that's going on, and do those regular um, exams and things that are preventive so that you know what's going on. So I'll keep you posted if it becomes a situation where, you know, this is going to be a long-term deal. But for right now, I'm just staying in the hope lane. So anyway, one of the things I do to maintain my spiritual health I do have church that I attend on Sundays that is um, with my church family, my pastor. I, I, I believe he is grounded in the truth and sound doctrine, and I love that. And I love getting to serve in my the bookstore on the campus. Um, it allows me to interact with people without feeling too overwhelmed because I'm, I'm more of an introverted extrovert, <laughs> even though people think I'm far more extroverted, but I'm not. Um, so those are great. I also have a small group that meets once a week of um, singles. I'm divorced and it's a little more mature singles. <laughs> and that's a great group. We can drill down a little bit more about the things that are happening in each of our season of life. Um, and I love that. But I do believe that each of us needs to have our quiet time, our meditation time, our time in the word, our time in prayer. And one of the, the ways I've found to do that over the years, which has just been really a joy for me, I'm kind of an academic kind of geek. I would be a student for life if there was such a job where they would pay me to go do that. Um, and so I do an inductive study, um, Bible study. It, I discovered it through Kay Arthur, who I don't know that she invented it, but I'm just saying I found a, a Bible study that she did about inductive uh, Bible study and basically what it does is it takes any book of the Bible and it breaks it down it breaks it down and puts it in context so many times uh, false religions or people who want to tear apart the Bible or have an argument with Christians want to pull scripture out and just fight over it and it's not in context. It's not at all what God meant when he, he gave us this love letter. And so I prefer having the ability, one, to be able to have that Bible study at my fingertips by me, by the Lord, um, without having to have some external book or something. I have my Bible, and I happen to have a specific inductive study Bible. And I will show you all of that. It, it breaks it out. It has um, at the back a, um, a, a breakout of like the key words and the time context and the author context. And it's just so awesome because a lot of times we want to claim things out of the Bible, but we need to make sure that we understand where they, where they came up, what they meant in that context, who the audience was and where that promise comes from. Um, I don't think that it doesn't mean it couldn't be for us. I believe the entire Bible is pertinent to us, but we just need to, to have our knowledge base in context. And so I like to do an inductive study. It helps me um, because by the time you're done with a particular book of the Bible, you have read through it probably a minimum of a dozen times maybe more because you read through once marking a certain set of words you read through twice marking a set of time frames you read through the third time marking some other things and and once you're done you have read it so many times that you've got ingrained who the author is who's speaking who's listening who where in time is it so what would that mean culturally and it helps you understand like how to claim that promise or how to claim that guidance. And I just find this extremely enriching for me because like I said, I'm, I'm academic and geeky and I would take college classes for the rest of my life as long as they weren't strictly ideology driven. I want to learn what I'm choosing the class for. <laughs> so I will go over the actual um, 
breakouts that are at the back of each of the books of the Bible in my actual inductive uh, study Bible. It, it's just, it weighs 10 pounds. I can't take it with me on trips really because it takes up too much of my luggage, but but it is so awesome in, in the way it breaks it out. And I have been walked through some very great uh, wisdom, some stuff I just needed to get through. Um, old School is about a parallel to the my book and a lot of it is about my recovery from some very serious trauma. And so being able to have at my fingertips something that can help me, you know, detox that or absorb that or understand it, you know, it wasn't my fault. This was the evil of others or whatever it might be. It is just an awesome thing and I can pick it up anytime I want. If I finish a book, and I'm going on a trip or something, I can open even an app, a Bible app, and know how to go through any given book um, the way I would want to for an inductive study. Because once you get the, the rhythm of it down pat, you know how you're gonna walk through each of those. So you can do your own thing. You don't need, I love Bible studies from some of my favorite authors, Lisa Turkers, Beth Moore. Um, I love some of the stuff from Bob Goff. But being able to just have your straight time with the Lord, um, that's what he went to the cross for, to tear the veil. We do not need any earthly human to get in between us and our time with Jesus. And so for me, being able to have a study where he is specifically talking to me at my season is fabulous. And that keeps my spiritual health thriving. Um, I, I, unfortunately, sometimes when we do end up in a small group or we do end up in a Bible study, people who have some stuff, you know, and you want to show them grace and you want to show them mercy, but they want to like not be happy with your situation too. So just being able to kind of pair off everybody else's opinion and sit with the Lord and his purpose and his will and his time for you is an incredible way to do a study. And that is my favorite way to do a study. So on top of my pastor and the message I get on a Sunday morning, on top of the small group and us drilling down either on that message or something else we're walking through, this is my you know, 5.30 a.m., perfect cup of coffee time. And I think you'll find it really advantageous because it does allow it to be just a flow for you. You don't feel constricted, you don't feel guilty if you didn't make it through a lesson before everybody's gonna talk about it. It's solely just you and your time. And, and it's really kind of funny because sometimes when I miss a morning, you know, I get up late or whatever it might be that just like rushes me out the door. I shouldn't let it do that, but I do on occasion. It's funny how even the next day when I come back in and it was the previous day's session, but it's pertinent to today. That what I get, the context, the, the word from God is pertinent to today. So before the beginning of time, he knew I was gonna miss that day. He knows when I'm gonna be with him and how it's gonna roll. And he's just, it's just perfect. Even other little things that come in, a song that I might listen to, a worship song, or you know, I have these daily scripture things or some other Christian authors I follow, all of a sudden that verse com you know, mates up with what I went through that day in the lesson. And it's not um, abnormal. It's, it's a divine appointment. Those things all work together for me to make sure I get it. And the Lord and I have dispensed with subtlety. I am just not one of his children that can be subtle. He needs to just like slap me upside the head and that's fine. That's, that's fine with me because then I know my marching orders. I know what the next step is for me and I, I'm a happy camper when that happens. I can't know too many steps down the line because I'll screw it up. But right here, right now, being able to know that I can spend some sweet time with him and it's our gig is, is perfect for me. So that is one of the ways I maintain my spiritual health. And I will turn this camera around and go over how an inductive study looks 
and how it breaks down and we'll add that in and that's something that you can take a look at. So let's go. Okay, so here we are. Um, this is where I do my inductive study. Um, this is my inductive study Bible. It, I happen to be in Ruth right now and I haven't marked it up a whole lot, so this will work great for an example's sake. Basically, each book starts with talking to you about the five W's and the H, who, what, where, when, why, and how, and you kind of go through and you end up reading through it about a dozen times and you're marking the who's and the what's and the where's and the why's and the how's so that you can bring yourself to a place where you've read it through so many times that you understand the culture, the setting in time, the, you know, the, the author, the uh, audience, everything that has to do with a specific book. And you don't have to be a theologian. You just have to be somebody who can do a little reading comprehension. Um, it's not overly, uh, it's not in Latin, it's not in Hebrew, it's not in Aramaic, it's in a translation. And so you can get, gather from it what the intended lesson or learning or direction might be. And I absolutely love this. I, I end up, like I said, going through it about a dozen times. This book happens to be really short. Ruth is only four chapters there's like comments on the on the margins in regard to genealogy various things like that and then here is Ruth at a glance well it's the same with every single book Samuel at a glance Genesis at a glance and you get to come back here and you put the author the date and time that where in history this fell the purpose of this particular book which you're gonna you're gonna come to that in a culmination the key words then the chapter themes, and you get a little more meaty room to, to talk about you know, what they're each trying to bring out. And, and so all of it comes to a place where you get a little more meat, but you get it personally. You get it from your own time in the Word with the Lord, as opposed to some exterior book or anybody else's opinion. And I'm not saying that a pastor and the sermon on, on Sunday or whenever you go to service or your small group, I'm not saying that any of those are a bad thing. Those things are awesome. But this for me, for my personal quiet time and getting to have some drill down, here are the promises of God, here's what he has for me and my purpose is fabulous. And you can do this anytime, anywhere, with any one of the 66 books of the Bible and just really get yourself into the actual time and culture. I took a trip to Greece and Israel with my daughter for her high school graduation and got to be in so many of the places that are in each of these books that it just made it so fabulous and brought it so to life for me. So being able to drill down and know what's going on in that particular time in the culture, who the author is, who's king, who's in politics, who's in leadership at the time things are going on. Um, all of it just creates a fabulous environment for you to hear the lesson, hear the story, and be able to do this anytime, anywhere. If you can, even if you have to go on an app and you're traveling somewhere, you can plug in those notes, and then when you get back home and get to your 10-pound Bible, <laughs> you can put the information in. So this is one of the core things for me, for my spiritual health, when I just need to sit back go through some stuff, and then allow the Lord to talk with me. Prayer and interaction with my Lord and King has to do with the conversation. I sit down, talk with him about what I'm going to go through, and then I hear from him as I'm going through it. And all of that together just gives me a peace, gives me a joy, gives me an understanding of where my purpose and his will is for me. And I just can't say enough about it. It is the core. I do have many other things I do for my spiritual health, but this is like the, the pillar. This is the, the foundation, the cornerstone for me. And I hope you enjoy that. If you would like me to send you um, a link in regard to this particular type of study, I'd be more than happy to do that. Just place a comment down below under this video. Um, if you like this and you like what you're seeing and hearing on my channel, if you hit like, subscribe, you can hit the bell, but if you don't like notifications, I understand. Um, but this is all 
progressing for my book and for publication and for a platform. And so I would just appreciate any feedback you give me so I know what I need to do going forward or what I maybe need to tweak uh, so that this stays engaging for all of you. And I really thank you for being here again and class dismissed.